Dr. Mohammed, and this is a new video for uh, ASCE 7 Seismic Provision Details Description or Detailed Description. I'm going to talk today about uh, two examples to uh, complement the previous video because previous video we were talking about the uh, some uh, hints and introduction and the side coefficients and the spectral acceleration parameters. So today we are going to talk about uh, or apply some examples or see some examples for what we have explained for the last time. Okay, now let's go and see what are the contents for our uh, video for today. First of all, we are going to talk about or explain a detailed example for determining um, ground motion parameters. Okay, so we were talking or we have talked before regarding uh, S sub S and S sub 1. So uh, we are going to talk about the de determination of the ground motion parameters. And after that, we are going to talk about the construction of design response spectrum uh, briefly, because already we have covered the response spectrum in previous videos. But today we are going to talk about the design. Take care of this design response spectrum, which is the smooth one that is commonly that you are encountering whenever that you are um, uh, making the design or the seismic design. And the last example is going to be for the construction or constructing the response uh, example for the construction of response spectrum. We're going uh, to go through a simple uh, example for constructing response spectrum. Okay. Now let's go to the next. Let's go to the examples directly. Only one hint, one thing that I want to highlight here that we are going to use ASCE 7, okay, uh, edition 10. Even that we have uh, now 16 edition, okay, 2016, and uh, I think that uh, before also there were uh, previous editions uh, in 05 and in 02 I remember so I think that uh, there is a great difference between 05 and 010 and there is small difference between or not very huge difference between 10 and 16 uh, especially whenever that we are talking about the risk targeted uh, uh, ground acceleration parameters so from uh, 05 2005 to 2010 uh, there is a great uh, change, but between uh, 2010 and 2016, the change is not that big. So I'm going to uh, like work on 2010 for the examples. Okay. Now let's go and see what the example looks like. How we're going to deal with this. In this example, the design based spectral acceleration SDS and SD1. So we have <coughs> uh, the uh, design spectral acceleration SD1 and SD, SDS and SD1. We're going to talk about one site in Savannah in Georgia, United States. They are first approximately determined by hand. We are going to determ determine these two. Uh, parameters by hand using maps and tables provided by ASCE7 and are then checked with a software utility provided by the US Geological uh, Survey which is USGS so we are going to work both ways and see the results in both ways the basic ground motion parameters in ASC7 are S sub S and S sub 1 Okay, as we said, S sub S, this is for the short periods. Okay, short period, and this is spectral acceleration at one second. Okay, <clears throat> and this is, as we said in the previous video, if you recall, we said that it is a site class B firm rock. This is the uh, default option for, um, uh, for the uh, reported or the mapped acceleration okay remember well that this is for site class B uh, you are going to find that in 2016 edition of ASCE that in the site coefficients 
are going to find that the values of FA and FV, they are not going to be one as before. But as I said, we are talking now about ASC 7 2010. So let's go with this and we are going to see how it will work. These accelerations are based on risk-based maximum considered earthquake. Remember, Will, this is risk. We are using the word risk here, which is M-C-E-R, maximum considered earthquake risk targeted. What is the meaning of risk targeted and what is the difference between M-C-E only versus M-C-E-R? You can recall, revisit the previous video and I have explained it in detail. <clears throat> for which approximately 2% probability exists of being exceeded in 50 years. This is for the maximum considered. In the maximum considered earthquake, this is the probability used. 2% probability uh, being exceeded or exists of being exceeded in 50 years. It is almost like, almost equal to 2,000, uh, like 475 year return period okay if you you're going to find this two percent in 50 years means that almost return period period of 2475 years of earthquake okay okay now ss s sub s and s sub one are used in several ways in ace as we said but the most important is in determination of the design level acceleration parameters sds and sd1 Okay, as we said, why we need SDS and SD1 in order to draw our response spectrum or they are the design parameters for us. Okay. The design accelerations include a side coefficient factor, FA and FV, that accounts for soil characteristics different from firm rock. As we said, the uh, already the mapped acceleration, they are recorded for firm rock this is the default value so we are going to use these soil coefficients fa and mv to adjust the mapped acceleration to be maximum considered earthquake with the inclusion of the soil coefficients and then we are going to obtain or we are going to multiply by two-thirds why two-thirds what is the rationale behind this please visit the previous video okay i explained it in detail which effectively converts from MCE or basis to somewhat lower level of shaking called the design basis earthquake yes so we have MCE now we are going to uh, find this in many places MCE it is maximum considered earthquake which is already recorded on the maps and we are going to add here small r or subscript r this means risk targeted okay and this is as I said commonly the return period is 2475 however what we are designing our structure based on design basis earthquake which is by multiplying this I mean that the maximum considered earthquake by two-thirds okay this would bring us to return period almost 400 75 we're not talking about two-thirds time this uh, number okay I'm, I'm talking about the value of the amplitudes itself okay so the maximum considered earthquake is going to be converted to design basis we call it d b e which is design basis earthquake okay so this is the design basis earthquake which is having a return per period of 475 okay okay so now let's let's go so as as I said many times before we have s sub s for example this is uh, this is mapped acceleration we're going to reach to another type of acceleration which is s m s for example s here which is the spectral maximum spectral acceleration this is by using f a which is the side coefficient or soil and then we are going to multiply by 2 over 3 in order to obtain the design SDS okay so remember this this flaw S sub S and S sub 1 
are obtained from the map so you need to f to visit ASCE uh, chapter 22 and you are going to find them due to the low resolution of the maps S sub S and S sub 1 values obtained from the maps may be very approximate it means that it's they are not going to be very accurate Thus, determining the values of S sub S and S sub 1 from a web-based computer program provided by the USGS is more common. So this is, should be your way for determining the uh, response spectrum parameters. Okay, and also this USGS, it provides FA and FV. Okay. <clears throat> So in this example, actually, we are going to work both. We are going to use it by hand and using the calculator of USGS. Okay, now let's go to the example itself. The example is we are going to find the ground motion values for the site in Savannah, Georgia. The site class is D. Okay, and it's downtown. And um, we are going to see that on the maps, we can find the place exactly. So let's go to the map. This is the map here. This is the map building site in Savannah. As you can see here, this is the place, which is start place here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now we want to go to the maps in order to find the place. Okay. Uh, so we need to go to the map in order to uh, to find the place. So we need to go ACE figures 22, okay, uh, figures 22, uh, 1. I think there is a mistake here. 22, 1 and 22, 2. So let's go here. This is the figures here. So we are going to put uh, based on the contours. You are going to find that it is here. If we are going to, this is start one here. It is between, if you, if you look, you are going to find that it is on the contour number 30. So this is why we call that it is S sub S. So S sub S would equal to 0.3 G. So take care, it is 0.3 G. And this is here written 30. Let's go to S, S sub 1. You are going to find that it is between contour of 10 and contour of 15 and it's a little bit closer to 10 so we are going to say as if it is on contour number 12 this means that s sub 1 equals 0.12 g so s sub 1 equals to 0.12 g take care that this is what a g it is gravitation gravitational acceleration gravitational acceleration okay so that's what we are doing here. So actually from, from this we can obtain that 0.3G used for S sub S as I have shown to you. And you are going to find that uh, for S sub uh, 1 it is 0 0.12. 0 0.12. So we can come up from the graph with these two or from the maps. This is the mapped we call this remember that we call this mapped okay mapped spectral acceleration spectral acceleration this means that they are maximum considered as we said maximum considered earthquake and here small r risk targeted maximum considered earthquake uh, earthquake uh, based spectral accelerations okay they are like row numbers and we need to modify to take into consideration the effect of soil in addition to the effect of the inherent overstrength in the building itself or in the structure itself so we need to go and get the side coefficients which are f a and f v we can take them from tables 11.4-1 and 11.4-2 here they are small here and I explained them in detail in the previous video but for our convenience I put it here in a big uh, in, a, in a separate slide so this is uh, table 11.4-1 and 2 this is for FA which is related acceleration part and this is FV which is related to the velocity part acceleration as we said it is short periods and for long periods for FV 
uh, it is going to be for one second okay so these are the values our case that we are at D as we said stiff soil profile so we are if you go here our S sub S as we said we found we found it it was in between right so S sub S it was 0.3 however S sub 1.12 so actually we have S here it is 0.25 here 0.5 here so we are here some in somewhere in between so we need what a kind of interpolation so this interpolation for the case of D we have between 1.6 and 1.4 we can do it there are two ways to make or get this value simply by interpolation from this table or we can go to appendix A in ASCE it provides a kind of simple way for making the interpolation so I'm going to show it to you it is something like like this okay they are giving it in an equation so that or or at least it is easier for us to find it from this uh, appendix actually I do not prefer to go to the appendix it is easy for us to go or to use it from the table but anyway for your convenient and also to know about it so we have s sub s it is 0.3 go here and then get the value in between so we are uh, having 1.6 here minus the slope of this line times 0.2 okay which is going to give us the value uh, 1.56 which is f f a so we are between two values actually f a equal to 1.6 and f a equal to 1.4 uh, between which is 0.25 and 0.5 okay so these are the values and then we can obtain this uh, value for s sub s in a similar fashion we can apply it for s sub 1 and we can get f v equal to 2.32 okay so now it is okay for us and we have obtained uh, the values for f f a which is I didn't put here I think that we yes you are going to find it this is using the appendix as I said uh, so there are like uh, two ways as we said so you can find any way that is easy for you to use so we have FA which is going to be based on an equation in appendix A so uh, it is said here that although the interpolating from tables uh, is not difficult it is somewhat convenient inconvenient for this reason a variant of the tables is provided in appendix A of this book in tables G A-1 and G A-2 in which the coefficients in the original tables are replaced by interpolation formulas the example is reworked as follows so this is from the table in the uh, table g1 dash ga dash 1 this is fa 1.8 minus 0.8 sub s s sub s directly which is the uh, the short period map spectral acceleration for short period directly using this equation you can put 0.3 which is already we have obtained before and get the value and also for uh, ga dash 2 it is for fv you can obtain it 2.8 minus 4 times s1 so already s1 is 0.12 then we can obtain our f v so we obtain this from uh, the uh, the appendix or we can obtain it from the two tables directly either way is okay for for you to work them okay these are the same values determined from the interpolation as we have said before given the site amplified ground motion values the design ground motion values are obtained by well, yes now the values for us is that s this is s maximum to so go here and see this is the maximum considered uh, spectral acceleration for short period and at one second after the multiplication or after considering the soil effect which is 0.4 and 0.278 multiplied by g both 
right? So this means what? I want you to take care of this. Here, our S sub S, the maximum considered was 0.3. But due to the soil profile, we have increased this spectral acceleration almost by more than 50%, right? So it gives us 0.4 here. And for this case, it, it, it was 0.2. We increased it more than double, right? So it gives us 0.27 something here. What is the meaning of this? It means that the soil condition of this site is really going to amplify the original maximum considered earthquake here by 50% for the short periods and for long periods it is going to be increased by more than double can you imagine it so this is something that you need to understand and keep it in your mind that soil condition going to sometimes uh, double or triple the maximum considered earthquake acceleration spectral acceleration this is why it is very important to take into consideration our our uh, soil coefficients here okay so now we have considered the soil coefficient and we are ready to obtain the design spectral acceleration take care as i said we have s sub s for example this is mapped, then S, M, S, which is maximum considered after taking into consideration the soil coefficient. And then we have the design, S, D, S, which is the design. Design is going to take into consideration, here, soil comes, okay? Here, detailing and over strength of the building comes, which is design consideration here coming. And as we said, I explained it before. So we are going to reduce this to be two-thirds. And here to be two-thirds. We're going to reduce the maximum considered earthquake after considering soil coefficient by two-thirds. Uh, by one-third, I mean, so that it will be multiplied by two-thirds. So now we are going to find that our amplified spectral acceleration due to soil, so, uh, site, uh, soil, co uh, soil contribution is going to be reduced again to be 0 0.312 here and this one which is s sub 1 <coughs> maximum going to be reduced again to be 0 0.18 okay so these are and you can find them in ASCE 10 with these equations you can refer to them if you want it okay okay this is a kind of, of hint that is given by the uh, by the book but uh, they say that take care that we are multiplying by g always so g means that uh, we need S sds and sd1 if you go back here it is multiplied by g this means that it needs to be in order to get it into units we we're going to use the units of this gravitational acceleration so no problem with this but they said that when the terms SDS and SD1 are used to determine the design based shear, as we are going to see in a later video, video uh, like CSS, CS, they are referred to as acceleration parameters. While that the word parameters here is not accurate from ASCE because they are having values, actually, they are not parameters. Parameters means that they are unitless, but actually, they have units. And in this context, no units should be assigned to the terms. Yes, that's that's right. This inconsistent use of units for the same term should be addressed in future uh, versions of ACE. So this is maybe something in ACE need to be addressed in the future. Okay. Now we are ready to go to the next one, which is uh, using USGS ground motion calculator. As we said before, we have used it by hand. Now we are going to use a calculator which is provided by USGS. Uh, you can visit this uh, website. Maybe it works for you. Okay, uh, it was working actually before I tried to check it today, but it was not working. I don't know why. So anyway, this is what is uh, provided an ACE. Okay, so the web page containing the calculator has the following address. Appendix B. So you can find this if you visit this web page, and you are going to find the main screen looks something like this. 
this is the main screen in USGS. We're going to find that first here they are ask you which kind of uh, design code parameter that you are talking about, the document itself. And then it is going to be the report title, which is the title of your report. And then it is going to talk about the uh, site uh, classification, which is B, D, A or something. And then here the risk category, they are asking about it. I don't know why actually they are asking about it. So anyway, so I, I think that it has no meaning for, for the site category here. But anyway, this is what the this uh, this uh, this screen or this web page is providing, and then they are uh, putting here asking you for the site latitude, which is a uh, value positive value, and then the site longitude, which is commonly it is negative value. Take care of this whenever that you are talking about US, then it is commonly it is point it is negative value. So these are the uh, information that is needed uh, by this applet in order to calculate or by this calculator in order to calculate for you uh, the, uh, the values of the spectral acceleration. So here, this is the output. If you put everything as before, you are going to find the output. Here, they are putting S sub S and S sub 1. Remember that we have calculated by our hands from the maps 0.3 and 0.12, almost like what we have done. Here, this is S, S sub, uh, this is the maximum after considering the soil co uh, coefficient. So it was 0.4 and 0.2, almost exactly as we have explained before. And uh, here, S sub DS, I'm sorry, it is the, it is not very clear, but this is SDS, okay, and this is SD1, design acceleration for short periods, and this is design acceleration, spectral acceleration for at one second. It is 0.323 and 0.186, which is almost right as we have done, okay. So you can visit this and do this exercise by yourself. You are going to find that the results are the same. Okay, so these are the, uh, the latitude and longitude for our case, which is Savannah. Take care of the minus here, okay? Take care of the minus here, okay? And these are the provided values after, uh, after uh, doing it. I strongly recommend for you to visit the page, try to put all the inputs in this example, and check that you are obtaining the right uh, values from the calculator provided okay and these are as we said they are close to the values computed by hands in the previous slides okay now let's go to another example it is a short example actually and it is also uh, only uh, giving another uh, way for not another way but it emphasis on using the uh, calculator so here we are talking, we are going to talk about one example. This is an overview for, for an example. This is from the design, uh, seismic design manual, uh, code examples. So uh, we are going to use the US seismic design maps as we have done in the previous, in the previous um, example. So just I'm going to show you the problem statement and how we are going to go through it. So a building site in California, this is in California in this time is located at 38.123 north with latitude 38.123 this is the way how it it is defined always so latitude and longitude is the best way and most accurate way in order to get the uh, ground motion accelerations in general and 121.123 west which is longitude Okay. Longitude, it is going to have take care of this. There is a minus here, so take care. And the soil profile is site class D. We are dealing with a site class D. Okay, so um, determine the following. First one is mapped risk targeted maximum considered earthquake. We are familiar now with this, which is MCER. 
spectra response acceleration parameters s sub s and s sub 1 and number 2 it is the side coefficients side coefficients fa and fv for the mcer okay which is going to be sms and sm1 and number three, we need the design spectral response acceleration parameters, which is SDS and SD1. So they are, as we said, the three main parameters for us and for the design. Okay, now let's go for the mapped MCER, which is S sub S and S sub 1. Here for the given site, this one, latitude and longitude, the USGS, please check it by yourself. Now you can stop the video, go to the go to the calculator and this website, which is US Seismic Design Maps application. It is going to provide you based on the long latitude and longitude. It is going to provide you S sub S and S sub one. So please, you can stop the video now, visit the page, check these values for the latitude and longitude. Okay. It would give you 0.634 G and 0.272 G for S sub S and S sub 1, respectively. Okay, now this is the first requirement. Let's go to the second requirement here, which is related to the contribution of the soil. So we need to go to F, A and F, V. Then you can obtain them directly from the tables, or you can, as I said, from the same website, it would provide it for you just you need to put the site class and the information that is related to the uh, to the structure and the location uh, sorry to the location so it is going to be provided as 1.2 and 1.8 take care here for this site which is California it seems that due to the soil profile which is site class D the amplification is going to be like 29 percent over okay However, for longer period, it is, look how much, it is almost double like, we are going to increase it by almost like 68, okay, uh, sorry, 86% increase, which is very significant, very significant. This means that really the side class is doing a great and playing a great role in amplification of the soils uh, in the spectral acceleration. Now let's go to the MCR spectral response acceleration parameters adjusted for side class effects are going to be the multiplication here FA times FS 1.2 times this uh, S uh, sub S and here FV times S sub 1 we can obtain the values here 0.819 and 0.5 okay this is for California as we said the last step is very easy which is we're going to multiply it by two-thirds each for each one then we're going to obtain the last design spectral acceleration okay okay so this is the uh, uh, the final uh, requirement or the last requirement for us and these are whatever what is needed for us okay what we're going to do with this is this is something related to the drawing of the response spectrum that we have explained before we are going to draw our smooth response spectrum okay actually here this is the commentary I I have mentioned before that uh, they are asking in the calculator USGS the risk category which is it is even though the category is not necessary for determining SDS and SD1 as I said the same comment already they are putting here okay now let's go to after after obtaining the SDS and the SD1 what we need now is to draw response spectrum actually these they are okay for us to to use but but if we are dealing with like different or multiple degrees of freedom building this means that we are not going to deal with only one um, uh, not only one mode we are going to use like several modes like two three four modes this means that we need response spectrum 
and from this response spectrum we are going to obtain the corresponding okay uh, the t we have t1 for mode no number one and corresponding s and t2 and its corresponding s spectral acceleration and t3 and t4 and t5 so this means that we are we need to calculate this several times so why not that from these two parameters we can draw smooth response spectrum that would help us for any type of mode shape or the corresponding spectral acceleration for any mode shape this is what we this is the philosophy behind why we need to draw what we call it the design if you if you remember that i mentioned about this before and i said that there was a response spectrum which is related to the earthquake but here we are going to talk about design response spectrum which is the smooth one that i uh, indicated and this is the time now for talking about this design response spectrum so why we need the response spectrum as i said for one special case which is modal analysis modal analysis procedure it is necessary to develop acceleration graph commonly referred to as acceleration spectrum because the design acceleration values are required for an entire range of building periods as i said before that we have different periods if we have like this we have different periods so we are in great need for one smooth response spectrum so this is why if we got sds and sd1 then we can draw we can draw this smooth response spectrum okay okay we, we write here to proceed with an equivalent static analysis of structure we need to determine only the two values as i said it's enough for us of the design acceleration response spectrum sd1 sds and sd1 this is because the sh base shear equations are directly related to these parameters however for buildings and structure requiring modal analysis procedure it is necessary to develop an acceleration graph commonly referred to as an acceleration spectrum because design acceleration values are required for an entire period uh, an entire range of building periods for those cases in which the use of design spectrum is required the code stipulates that this spectrum be constructed in the form of acceleration response spectrum okay so we are going to draw it now okay now this is the the drawing of it it's it's pretty easy actually so this is the the response design response spectrum we are going to draw it these are we have like different parts here okay there is the the dark part and a like light gray here light gray here and it is in between here okay another type of the gray so f for each area we are going to find that we have like this is the curve straight line horizontal line here and then a curve here until this point and then another curve we found that we can draw this response spectrum based on the two parameters that already we have obtained before sds and sd1 so we start from here and we say that this point is sd1 okay and we say that this point is sds we're going to draw a line as as i'm going to uh, let you know uh, in in detail and in a minute based on the codes so we're going to draw this line and then horizontal line until certain point there is two points controlling points here we're going to call them t node and ts this is short period uh, very short period limit and we have ts which is the short period okay also and then there is a curve here that is giving the response spectrum okay this curve is going to be drawn using the t corresponding t and the sd1 which is already obtained before okay and then we have the last portion which is going to be obtained by sd1 and tl and t node the controlling point here is tl and this is given 
uh, on the maps, on the spectral maps, you are going to find the long period. Okay, why we why we make this kind of um, like segmentation of the response spectrum? So don't worry about the about the the controlling points. I'm going to explain them in detail and and these uh, you know the equations for each portion. But what I want to put is the philosophy here. We mentioned before in the two lectures before that we have like three different portions for the response spectrum. Do you remember? We said that the first portion is acceleration sensitive, the second portion here it is velocity sensitive, and the third one it is displacement sensitive, right? So this is why the design response spectrum is like reflecting this consensus that we said here here the building is as if the building is uh, the maximum acceleration of the building that is going to experience it is going to be similar uh, exactly like the maximum acceleration of the uh, response spectrum of the earthquake or the earthquake itself and here for the velocity por portion it means that any change in the maximum velocity of the input earthquake would be the same for the building. They are going to be the same. So it is sensitive for velocity here. And then this is the displacement uh, since the part. And we put this as region 1, region 2, and region 3 as we, as we said and explained before. Okay, as we said and explained before. Okay. Now the the portions here is related to the uh, to the structures also. So here, this portion means that our structure is going to be very very rigid, stiff structure. So this is why we said that for very stiff buildings, the acceleration response approaches the maximum ground acceleration. They are the same. We're talking about what acceleration. Buildings in this period with range of 0.3 seconds or less behave as rigid bodies. Do you remember when I was explaining before that the, the structure is moving as if that it is similar to the ground, they are stick to the ground. Then for moderately short periods of order of 0.1 to 0.3 okay, seconds, the maximum response acceleration are about two to three times the maximum ground acceleration and remain constant over this period. And we go back and visit, which is this period here, from here to here. You are going to find that the response spectrum is almost like three times. This is the peak ground acceleration here. So here it is going to be, we are going to find that in this short period between T node and TS, it is almost like, as we said, double or triple the maximum ground acceleration. So if we have the maximum ground acceleration here, something like, for example, this is the maximum, then the building is going to respond and double or triple this value if the natural period of the structure is small between here. Okay? And then for long period, okay, so these are like the four portions, one, two, three, four. Okay, so if we go back here, this is portion one, for example, two, three, this is 3 and this is 4 here, okay? Actually, take care, this is 1, 2, it is, they are the same. I mean that 1, 2, I mean that they are in the uh, acceleration sensitive part. And then 3, sensitive for velocity, this is displacement. Only in this portion, which is acceleration sensitive, there are two portions, okay? That's it, two portions, but both of them, they are sensitive to acceleration. And for uh, uh, portion 3, this is long period, and we said that it is related to velocity. And for portion 4, for very long period buildings, the maximum displacement response is the same as the maximum ground displacement. Okay, so this is the case for, and this is from ACE 7, we are going to talk about the construction of the acceleration response spectrum. Actually, already I explained about, about this. First, we need to know what are the controlling points here. T node, TS, uh, 
this is uh, one second and this is TL. So what are these controlling parameters in T? This is you can find it in the code and you are going to find the T, it is the fundamental period in seconds. T node equals to 0.2 SDS over SD, SD1 over SDS. Already we know this and this parameters from the previous uh, slides. TS, it is short period, SD1 over SDS. We know the each one. And TL, long period transition uh, period uh, shown in figure 2212 through 22 there's 16 so from 12 to 16 is considered to be the our uh, maps uh, and you can find TL the long period okay long period it is the the period where that the structures are considered to be after that it is very long period structure the structure is very ductile okay the structure is extremely ductile okay which is not common for for us we cannot use it uh, commonly and this is actually the the four parts of the uh, of the uh, of the response spectrum inclined part there is an equation which is you can find it in ASCE 11.4-5 the spectral acceleration here is given by this equation the main parameter is SDS we know it T the natural period of the structure T node which is already defined before and then this portion it is horizontal totally horizontal and it equals to sds there is nothing here to be done and then this is this curve it is sds over 2 over t and then this part it is with this equation which is sd1 tl over t squared okay. these are the four parts one two three four you're going to find them in detail in asce and they are like one, two, three, four, and here. So they are available for us. Okay. Now, by this, you are available. You are able to uh, draw the response spectrum based on ASCE. Okay. Now let's take an example and let's wrap up this video for today. So we have a problem statement that it is we have in California, a building site in California has the following design spectral response accelerations. We have SDS 0.55. This, is, this means already we have obtained everything before and SD1 is 0.34 and TL from the maps it is 8 seconds. So everything is, is obtained. Long period, transition period it is from 22-2 requirement the following please uh, draw the response spectrum draw the response spectrum you can stop the video here and you can using these three pieces of information you can draw the response spectrum and then come back to the video and check what we have done okay for the design response spectrum section 11.4.5 provides the equations for the 5% damped we're talking about 5% uh, damped spectral response acceleration S sub A relative to the peri period T. So we have, as we said, like 1, 2, 3, 4. Four portion of uh, the spectral acceleration as we are going to see. First, we need to determine these values T node, TS, TL, as we said, from our obtained values. And long period here. From here, we, we want to obtain these values from the input that we have. T node, we need to obtain it. It is 0.12. TS, it is 0.6. TL, it is 8 seconds after using these substitutions and the equations that we have done. Okay? Then, we're going to draw the four portions. As I said, you can stop the video, pause the video here, and look to the calculation. We're going to find them. They are sound. And then we put them into this table. Okay. So you are going to find that these are the calculation based on the equations for ASCE 11.4-5 uh, and dash 6, 6 and dash 7. Okay. 
and here for the second portion s equal to sds which is already given for us then we can draw the last thing is drawing the response spectrum as we said it is straight line here horizontal line here curve here until this point which is point 8 and then the uh, this uh, the equations that is going to be given and these are the values if you want you can check it by yourself okay I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, video and I hope that you have understood what I uh, said for today please you can work these examples by yourself and try to make it uh, work it out as we have explained in this video thank you and see you next time